you have understanding, hear this. What I'm about to say, you can only hear it if you have understanding. human beings, they open them, they look at them, they look like some strange thing that have been written that belongs only to some special people in this world. Man, this God we are talking here is not a joke. He's a God who sees everything. David feared him because he said, a word is not in my mouth, you know. It. And you know already what I'll say tomorrow when the problem will come and what will happen. God is saying, there is no heart here. There is no secret in your heart that we lay and cover before God. You must be very stupid enough, extremely stupid, to think that God does not know you. You know, he uses the extreme to show the natural. By telling you, you must be very stupid when you stand before men and look like you're okay, but God knows the secret of your heart from air to them. Is that as if all life, comfort, light, and joy were extinguished, which means switched off in the life of the dead. That's a place of what? Destruction. You could think you will think you're walking, but you are a dead person walking, which means this. Look at this. Your life, your comfort, your light, your joy are extinguished, means switched off. You are not different from the place of destruction of those who are dead because all this has been taken away from them. And here you are alive, but you are walking all this, you don't have it. Is it alive? Is it alive? It's not alive. That's how we are walking. Dead are walking. Because that's why you find the world is no longer. That's why you find there's no consistency in what you do. Because everything you do is dead. As if all life, comfort, light, and joy were extinguished, switched off. Have you ever switched off things? There's no activity. You're married, but you're not living. You're married, but there's no life. If God sees what is going on in the world of the dead, then surely he knows what is happening in the world of the living. Let me tell you, there is one thing that the Bible has proven. When things don't work, it is never always the word that is preached. Moses had the power. He had people looked at him, they saw his face alleviating, but they didn't hear everything he said. And they died. Your joy is not all, all this thing that you have. Your joy is in Christ. By his power, he turned up the sea. He, he silenced it. He calms it. Mm -hmm. Continue. By his wisdom, he can't ring up to this. Now you tell which problem do you have that God can silence? Tell me which problem do you have that God can silence? 14. 13, sorry. By his breath, the skies became fair, and his hand pierced the gliding serpent. You can call upon the breath of God, and your marriage becomes fair. 
you just say, God, you must believe in this marriage. And the sky becomes fair. There was rain, there was destruction, there was everything. You call upon God's breath. And God us. You can do that. But do you know why you don't do it? Because your heart is stolen by the devil. The devil is the one who speaks to you. You better hear the devil, but not God. You don't belong of God. If you belong of God, that's why it's able, the understanding, you will hear what God says. You are willing to hear the voice of the devil. You don't voice the devil. He only comes to do what? Kill, steal, and destroy. And that's what he's doing in you. But you believe it so much that that's the voice. You want to hear. What binds that? What binds pride in this verse? By his wisdom, he does what? So what is going to bind pride? And wisdom is what? God. <laughs> Any person who doesn't fear God cannot pull distraction down. But when you fear God, listen to me. Even sorcerers when they are planning and you have no idea. That is, you walk out, you are you have no idea what Satan is planning because you are fearing God. Second time. Because it is the fear of God that beats destruction which is pride. Not anything else. Pride can bring destruction that you've never seen. It kills, it releases a folk. It is total destruction. That's what pride does in marriage, in relationship, in ministry, in everything. When you try to arise in your life with pride, don't turn to pride. Pride is distracting. You turn to God, the God who has power to make it what? Afraid, terrified, to restrain it, to threats. He's the one who fight. Which voice are you? Is it the voice of pride, of distraction, or the voice of the one who can pull down destruction? These disciples, they have shown the west came, the song came, and no one else could deliver them. They knew destruction has done what? Has come. And the only way I'm going to fight this destruction is by doing what? The Bible says, Jesus stood up. The one who rebuke is not used. In the sense of rebuking the water, there must be something Jesus was rebuking. He knew it is a spirit. That's why this destruction, it rose against them. It was bringing them down. He rose and rebuked the spirit. The Bible says everything went and it was calm. When you see a problem, man, Jesus, Jesus was with Peter. He rebuked the devil behind Peter. Not Peter. You are seeing destruction around you, around your friend. You are seeing destruction around your church. You are seeing destruction around your marriage. You are seeing destruction in your finances. But you are seeing the person. Even when you have a deal with someone, it still is the money he goes. Don't see the person. You need to see the devil behind that person. You need to rebuke that spirit. Rebuke it. You will see they will be calm. Proud people, God hasn't finished with them in one day. He will let you. He will empower your pride again. He will even make you more proud. He will even make you more proud. He will make you more proud. Become the most destructive person ever. Then when he will finish with you, the world will talk about you in a very negative way. It is exactly like Moses and Pharaoh. Moses comes, Pharaoh, let my people go. Let them go out of captivity. Pharaoh hardens his heart. God says, I will even harden it more. Then at the end of it, I will teach Pharaoh a lesson that he don't play with me. You cannot fight God. He will finish you. 
and the dead will crush you. You will live among the dead in destruction. Everything you are going through will disappear. God, the day you stand and suddenly God, and I'm not wrong, I don't know why I've done this. What you are doing is the result of your heart. What you are getting is the result of what you do. God does not do wrong to men. Everything is happening to you is the state of your heart. It is your heart lining. It is the pride of your heart. Everything you are getting, God does not do any wrong to man. Be it far to be said that God did wrong to a man. Are you going through suffering? Until you meet God, it's when the sufferings will make. But if you are not meeting God, your sufferings will make nothing. There will be things that will pierce your heart, then you will become rebellious. You start to ah, this God, look at what he did to me. But if your suffering has been changed to a place of humbleness of the heart, then you will meet Jesus. Then your suffering will have meaning. What is wrong with us? Why is the heart so hard? To just give it to God. What is the problem? Why are we so hard the way we are?